Okay, so welcome to uh, part two of this video on the variance of the binomial distribution. So, uh, before the break, I showed you that the variance of the binomial distribution is in fact mpq, or mp times 1 minus p. Uh, and now I'm going to give you a second argument for why that's true. So we know that the variance of x is given by this formula, and we know that this reduces down to the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. Now, we already know what the expected value of x is, uh, so what, all we need to find is what the expected value of x squared is. So the expected value of x squared, then. Right, so what we know is that x is equal to x1 plus x2 all the way up to plus xn. And we know some very nice properties about expectation values. Indeed, this is how we found the expected value of x for our binomial distribution. Uh, we said that the expected value of x uh, would be equal to the expected value of x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to plus xn. And then we just applied linearity of the expected value, and which we proved in an earlier video, uh, and said that this is the expected value of x1 plus the expected value of x2 plus all the way along to plus the expected value of xn. Now, the expected value of a Bernoulli distribution is p, so we have here p plus p plus p plus b all the way up to the nth one, so we overall will end up with np. So that's where we got this result from. And in a similar theme, we can say that the expected value of x squared is equal to the expected value of x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xn squared and all of that. So now let's just square this out. Uh, it's equal to the expected value of, uh, you'll end up with x1 squared plus x2 squared plus all the way up to plus xn squared. And then you'll end up with a cross term. So you'll end up with plus 2x1, x2, and you'll end up with all of those cross terms. So the nice way that we can write that is plus 2, the sum over i is less than j of xi, xj, which is going to get every possible combination because you give me an i value, so that i, say, be equal to uh, 1. Uh, so i can take on any value from 1 to n. Well, it can't take on n because there won't be a j that satisfies it then. But it will be able to take on any value up to n minus 1. Uh, so let's say it was equal to 1. Then you'd let j get be 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to n. If i was then, then you'd say i is equal to 2. You'd let j equal you wouldn't let it equal 1 because j needs to be um, j needs to be greater than i. And the reason is that we've already got the uh, x2, x1 in the form of x1, x2. And we put it on twice. So we've already got that. Uh, so we'll get... Uh, this, uh, so we'll get x2, and then we'll get x3, x4, x5, all the way up to xn, and that will cover all the cross terms, so get rid of that, uh, because it's covered already in that. Okay, uh, so we get, end up with that, and now by linearity of the expected value uh, uh, operator, we can say that this is the expected value of x1 squared, uh, plus the expected value of x2 squared, uh, plus all the way up to the expected value of xn squared, uh, plus 2 times the sum i is less than j of the expected value of xi times xj. Okay, wow. Uh, so, uh, firstly, we know what the expected value of x1 squared and expected value of x2 squared are, uh, because we did that in the previous video. Uh, if you uh, want the expected value x squared of a of a Bernoulli distribution, because x1, x2, and xn are all, uh, remember, Bernoulli distributed, xi is Bernoulli distributed p. Uh, so, uh, basically, they are mapping you onto 0 or 1. So if we draw a little picture of this, uh, just to remind ourselves, we have an abstract probability space, which is being mapped onto uh, 0 uh, and 1, and the probability of going onto 1 is p, and the probability of going onto 0 is q. Then if we square this, uh, it goes on to, well, if you, you could view this as the expected va value of x squared, or you could just apply lotus. Uh, but if you do square it, then again, 0 squared is just 0, and 1 squared is just 1. And what's the probability that you get 1? It remains p, and the probability of getting 0 still remains q. So in fact, the expected value of x squared is the same as the expected value of x, because the uh, random variable x squared well, x1 or x2 squared, sorry, I should have, shouldn't have said x because we were using x to denote some other random variable. Uh, but if you have a random variable which is distributed Bernoulli and you square it, 
it's still distributed Bernoulli and it remains exactly the same. I.e. if y is distributed Bernoulli p, uh, then y squared is also distributed Bernoulli p. Uh, so that's a nice powerful theorem. Uh, and basically that uh, results in the expected value of x1 squared uh, just remaining as uh, p. So all of these are just p, so replace those all with p all the way up to there, and so we get np there, so that's equal to np. So now what we need to deal with is this uh, sum i is less than j of the expected value of xi uh, times xj. Now by symmetry, uh, all we need to do is evaluate one of these and then all the others are the same. So i.e. if we, if we uh, evaluate the expected value of x1, x2, it's going to be the same as the expected value of x1, x3, because they're all independent and identically distributed. So the problem is exactly the same. Uh, so we just need to work out it for one and work out how many of these overall that we have. Okay, uh, so if we work this out for one, uh, so uh, you can think of it like this. We have some abstract probability space, or you can think of it in our terms of our concrete probability space, or if we flipped a coin n times. In fact, that's probably the best way. Uh, heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, heads. So there's just some outcome in this probability space. And we had x1 over here, which was ascribing you uh, a 0 or a 1, depending on whether you got a tail first, uh, which you had probability q, or whether you've got a head first, which have probability p. And obviously I'm being a bit sloppy here because the probability function isn't a mapping uh, from isn't a mapping uh, from the um, sample space to uh, the re uh, to the uh, interval zero to one. It's actually a mapping from the set of events. Uh, but I'm just drawing out like the probability mass function here. So this is the probability mass function rather than the probability distribution. So x1, x2, and then we've got x2 down here, which is again mapping you onto 0, 1, depending on whether your uh, second flip was a tail or a head. Okay, and again, it's going to be q is the probability that you get a tail on your second flip, and p is the probability that you get a head on your second flip. Okay, uh, so uh, if we want uh, the random variable x1 times x2, then this has two possible values. It could take on uh, 0, or it could take on 1. So if you multiply two zeros together, you're going to get 0. If you multiply the problem, uh, the, um, if you multiply uh, the, if you multiply uh, the 1 and 0 together, you're going to get 0. And if you multiply uh, 1 and 1 together, you're going to get 1. So those are the three of the other two possible values. But what are the probabilities of getting those? Well, if you get, if you got the 1, then, uh, well, firstly, um, if we worked out f what the probability of getting a 1 is, then we'd know instantly what the probability of getting a 0 is, because it's just 1 minus whatever the probability of getting this one is. Uh, so let's work out the probability of getting a 1. So let's work out the probability that x1, x2 is equal to 1. Well, that's equal to the probability that x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 1, because that's the only way that you can get a 1. And because they're independent, this is just the probability that x1 1 is equal to 1 times the probability that x2 is equal to 1, uh, which is just equal to p squared. So this is p squared, and this is 1 minus p squared here. Um, okay, uh, so uh, now uh, if we want the expected value of this distribution, x1, x2, uh, then it's just going to be equal to p squared, because this is a Bernoulli distribution with probability p squared, so that's its expected value. If you want, to, if you want the concrete reason for why that is, uh, rather than just remembering that the, that the Bernoulli distribution expected value is like that, it's because the expected value is the sum of all possible values of x, which are 0 and 1, times the probability of it being each of those. Now, 0 times the probability, 1 minus p squared, is going to be 0, plus uh, then we're going to add on 1 times p squared, so overall the expected value is just going to be p squared. Okay, uh, so uh, we now have the expected value of x1, x2, which we can, uh, so we can therefore extend this to say that the expected value of xi, xj uh, is equal to p squared 2. Okay, uh, so we get that the expected value overall of our big variable x squared, which remember was the original uh, variable which was distributed binomially, uh, is equal to np, uh, and it was remember plus 2 times uh, i is less than j of the expected value of xi uh, xj, and now we can replace this with p squared, 
Uh, but we need to work out how many possible uh, possibilities there are here. So how many ways are there of picking two things uh, from uh, from n different... Uh, so basically we have x1, x2, all the way up to xn. How many ways are there of picking two things where order does not matter? So you pick one thing, there are n possibilities for that. You pick the second thing, there are n minus 1 possibilities for that. But then that counts uh, the two possible orders, so you need to divide it by 2. Okay, so we're going to get np uh, plus 2 times... Uh, the number of these, n, n minus 1 over 2, times uh, p squared. Okay, uh, so move this up and get that out of the way. Okay, so uh, this is equal to n, p, the 2's cancel, and we get plus n, n minus 1, p squared. So overall we get n squared, p squared, minus n, p squared, plus n, p. And then what we have to remember to do is that the variance of x is not equal to the expected value of x, but the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. Now the expected value of x was np, so we can fill this in with n squared p squared minus np squared plus np minus np squared. Uh, so this and this cancel, and we get that it's np uh, minus np squared, and we'll factor out the np, and we'll get np times 1 minus p, which is equal to n, p, q. So there we are, another way in which you can derive the variance of the binomial distribution and get the exact same answer as if we'd just use that linear property of the variance function for uh, if the two random variables are independent.